In this video, we provide the solution to question number 15 for practice exam number four for math 1210. And this is a curve sketching question. In the end, we're gonna have to graph the function f of x equals two x over x squared minus one. But we can't just graph it. There are some special categories we need to show our work for in order to get full credit on this question. So let's look at the first one about domain. As this is a rational function, the only problem with the domain is what makes the denominator go to zero. So we need to solve the equation x squared minus one equals zero. Um, there's a couple ways you could solve this quadratic equation. I'm just gonna do it by factoring. It's a difference of squares. So we get x minus one times x plus one equals zero. We see the domain is gonna be everything except for plus or minus one. Now it often turns out that the domain has a lot to do with the discontinuities of these functions. Not always the case, but on this one, because we have a rational function, we do know that if the denominator goes to zero and the numerator doesn't, we have to have a vertical asymptote. So there's gonna be vertical asymptotes at the value x equals plus or minus one. And if you wanna draw those vertical asymptotes right now on the graph, you could do so. I'm gonna to hesitate to do so because maybe I wanna draw the scale somewhere other than just one, two, three, four. Uh, we'll see in a minute. So I'm gonna to hesitate to do that. All right, what about the intercepts here? Looking at our function. Uh, the y-intercept is gonna happen when we plug in x equals zero. So the y-intercept, this is just f of zero. And if you plug in f, f of zero, you're gonna get zero over negative one. We see that the uh, the y-intercept is gonna be zero. In terms of the x-intercepts, the x-intercepts of a rational function occur when the numerator goes to zero. So we need to solve the equation 2x equals zero, which would then imply that x equals zero. So this function is gonna pass through the origin, and that's the only intercept, x or y. How about symmetry? Well, to test for symmetry, we need to look at the value f of negative x. So we, plug, we replace each of the x's in the formula with a negative x. We get two times negative x, over negative x squared minus one. Well, when you square a negative, you just get back the positive version there, x squared minus one, you're gonna get negative two x. So this is just the original function, just times negative one, so negative f of x. This tells me that my function is odd, uh, which means that it'll be symmetric with respect to the origin. So that's something we wanna incorporate later on into the function. That is the graph of the function. For the in behavior, what we want to determine with the in behavior is what happens is we take the limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity, the very end of the domain. So taking the limit as x approaches infinity, remember our function was 2x over x squared minus 1. Uh, because this is a rational function, it turns out that the limit only depends on the, top, the, the dominant terms on the top and bottom. So taking the limit as x approaches infinity, we get 2x over x squared, which is the same thing as just 2 over x as x approaches infinity. In which case, then as we allow x to go towards infinity, we see that this is going to look like 2 over infinity, which is just 0. So that is we have a horizontal asymptote, and we're going to approach 0 from above. If we take the limit as x approaches negative infinity, uh, this calculation basically turns out to be the exact same. Um, we're going to take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2 over x. We end up with 2 over negative infinity, which this will look like 0 from the left. So we have a horizontal asymptote at the value, well, just the x-axis. And like I said, on the right, we'll approach 0 from above, the positive side, and from the left, we'll approach 0 from, uh, from below. All right, so what about... Uh, monotonicity. Can we find the extrema here? Well, since we have the derivative already computed for us and all of the factorizations already taking place, we are ready to build a sign chart. Maybe let me write this a little bit higher. And so what are some critical numbers we should be looking at? Well, you see that the denominator goes to zero at one and negative one like we just explored earlier, but negative two times x squared plus one, that thing never goes to zero. X squared plus one, it doesn't have a real root. And so the numbers we're gonna be concerned about are negative one and positive one. And what happens to the derivative in that situation, f prime? In which case you can plug in values, like if you wanna use test values, like x equals zero, if you plug zero into this, uh, the numerator, mind you, it doesn't matter what you choose for x. x squared plus 1 is always positive. You times that by negative 2, it's always going to be negative. So the denominator is always going to be negative. So it only depends on, excuse me, the numerator is always going to be negative. The denominator will switch its signs, x squared minus 1. But I should also mention that you take x squared minus 1 and you're squaring it. What does that mean for us? Well, whatever you take, whatever you get for x squared minus 1, if you square it, it's going to be non-negative. So basically what I'm saying is ne uh, the, the denominator is always going to be positive except at the critical numbers. The numerator is always going to be always going to be negative. So what we see on this graph is we're going to get negative, negative, negative. 
Always. I, I did that without test points. You could plug in specific test points if you wanted to. So what that means for our function is this function is always decreasing. That's kind of a curious thing. Because of the vertical asymptotes, the function will always be decreasing, but there will be places where it's higher than another spot. It's basically just like you fell inside a portal. You would fall forever if you kept on falling in that portal. That's kind of what happens at the vertical asymptotes. All right, so our function is always going to be decreasing. That's important to note on the graph. Now, what about the second derivative? The second derivative doesn't really change things up much, right? If you look at the numerator, you get x squared plus 3. That thing is always going to be positive. It's never going to change the sign. You do get a critical number, or I should say a potential point of inflection at 0. And this x squared minus 1 cube shows up again from the quotient rule. So in terms of our sign chart, this time we want to consider negative 1. We want to consider positive 1. And we want to try 0 as well. And so let's look at what happens at the second derivative when that thing happens. Uh, using test values or some other method, we can see that it's going to switch its signs from, ne at, from when you pass negative 1, the second derivative will be negative, then positive. At 0, it switches from positive to negative, and from 1, you're going to go from 1 to positive again. So each of these times, it's going to switch its concavity. Uh, so what that tells you about the function is this is concave uh, downward, this is concave upward, this is concave downward, and this is concave upward. This gets us to be a point of inflection at zero. One and negative one are not points of inflection because they're vertical asymptotes, but concavity can change at a vertical asymptote, of course. And then what this tells us, uh, yeah, then we're, we're good to go. There's no maxima or minima on the graph because vertical asymptotes are not extreme points. Uh, there's, no, there's no critical number. There were no... There were no extrema on this graph. If you wanted to, you could do both of these tables together, do the first and second derivative tests at the same time. But now we have enough information, we can start graphing our function. So some things that were important is that the function goes to the origin. So we're going to include the point x equals 0. That definitely was an important point. We need to have our, our vertical asymptotes. I'm going to space this out a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to draw. There's no reason why x equals 1 has to be the first tick mark. So we're going to make this and just label it, right? This is our vertical asymptote, x equals 1. Um, we have to do the same thing on the other side. So let's keep the scale consistent there. So here is our other vertical asymptote. Try to draw these straight if you can. x equals negative 1. Um, I'm also going to label my my the origin there, 0, 0, because that's our intercept there. Uh, we also had a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis. So if you want to, you can kind of draw over it. That's perfectly fine. And so what? remember what we discovered here is that we're going to approach the asymptote from above on the right. We're going to pass the asymptote below right there. And then we are always decreasing. So if you start on the left-hand side and you're always decreasing, you basically are going to have to do something like this, which this part is decreasing. It's also concave downward, which we saw early on our tables exactly what should happen when we're left less than negative 1. So I'm going to erase those markers there. All right, so then when we go between negative 1 and 0, what did our chart say? Well, it's going to be decreasing right here, which is kind of obvious. We have to go from we have to go from the asymptote to the x-intercept there. But wait a second. Also, from negative 1 to 0, the second derivative was positive, so it should be concave up. So we should expect something like this happening on the graph. When you get past the origin, we're still decreasing because the first derivative is negative. But the second derivative now is also negative, so it should be concave downward. So the origin needs to be a point of inflection, so draw it with that inflection, something like that. And then the last piece to consider is what happens when we're past 1. Uh, well, when you're past 1, the function's still decreasing, but it's concave upward, and we're also approaching our horizontal asymptote from above. So the only way to put that together would be something like this. And so then this gives us our sketch of the graph of our function f of x equals 2x over x squared minus 1. We incorporated all of the stuff about monotonicity, concavity, discontinuities, in behavior, all of that stuff is incorporated into the picture. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you have a chance to try to see everything all at once, I suppose. I uh, can't fit everything. Sorry, it's just too much. Like there. And so thanks for watching, everyone.